According to the South African Institute of Professional Accountants, the country is still not addressing the root causes behind the decline in the number of learners taking up mathematics or the decrease in the pass rate of those who do choose the subject. Less than 30% of all metric students take maths and only half of them pass their exam. Let's talk more on this now and we are joined by educational specialist in this field and that's uh, Professor Craig Ponara. And uh, Prof, thank you very much for your time. You've heard that introduction. What is the main cause of students not choosing maths and even if they do choose it, sometimes they don't do as well as they should? Morning, Kali, and morning to the listeners and the viewers. I mean, there's no one simple answer to that question. That's the reality. Mm. Okay. But the problem stems from way below matric rate. Okay. So we're talking about matric exams at the moment, and we see this thing of 55% pass rate this year. It's been in the mid 50s for the last few years. And of course, that's passing at 30%, right? I'm not even sure we should talk about pass and 30% in the same sentence. Sure. Um, so so that's, that's point number one. Hmm. Why does this happen? Well, I think it's largely because not enough attention is paid lower down. And when I say lower down, I'm going to restrict it just to secondary school, to high school. One of the things that's happening is that so much attention is given to sorting out metric pass rates that at the same time, very little is happening with grade eight and grade nine, for example. And we really think that's part of the problem. While all this attention has gone into the 2022 matrix, and, and let's commend them for, for doing that because they've really achieved against the odds. And I'm talking about the whole system. Yeah. While that was happening, they were neglecting grade eight and nine. And that's what's been happening for way too long. You then, Prof, are now talking a somewhat different language to a professor I've just had a conversation with, a Professor Bram Fleisch from Wits University. And I posed this very question about what the basic education department is often criticized for, and that is to place emphasis on the pass rate versus the quality of the output. And he seemed to suggest to me that despite that criticism, there has been an overall improvement, particularly for him in rural provinces where this has been difficult to come by, the, the pass rate. Are you saying that indeed the obsession still is the pass rate versus quality? Without a doubt. I mean, it's a political game at the moment and the ANC is desperately trying to, to show that they're delivering on something. So I didn't hear very much at all last night about quality of pass. I only heard about the numbers and the percentages. Um, and, and it is something to celebrate. I'm, I'm not denying that, given what we've been through in the last three years. Mm. But the issue is that way too much attention is given at this, in, to the matrix situation and maybe grade 11. And, and very little attention is happening lower down. So I'll give an example of previous experience of working in rural schools, many of whom, many schools don't have, are, are overcrowded, don't have enough desks and chairs and stuff like that. When the metric exams start, and sometimes this is prelims, not just finals, right? When those exams start, grade eights and nines no longer come to school because the metrics have to be spread out across all the available classrooms. There's no school hall or something like that. And so the grade eights and nines are not being taught. Goodness. Solving the metric problem, and we're giving them opportunity to improve. And, of course, that's essential. Yeah. At the same time, those grade eights and nines may not be coming to school. And that might be the whole of the, four, the, the, whole of the fourth term, but even parts of the third term. Mm. So what we have seen in, in many rural contexts, and this is happening in townships too, is that learners are actually getting about 70% of teaching time across the year because they are not at school in much of the fourth term. 
Now, how do we expect to build on that if that's the situation every single year for the kids in the lower grades in high school? Mm. Let's drill deeper then, Prof, and look at mathematics specifically. There is a comment last night that was made by the DG of basic education, Matanza Mamweli, who raises a concern about what he says is South Africa possibly facing a shortage of skills in the field of commerce. And that's because of either a drop in the number of pupils who are enrolling in this uh, category or in the subject of uh, commerce, and that talks to maths. Is that likely to get worse, or you think because they are now on top of the issue, they recognize it as a possible threat, they are now going to address it? Well, it's great that they recognize it, and I'm sure they will address it. One of the concerns I have with the way the DBE particularly speaks is that they always tell us about the inputs. They tell us about what they're doing. We've got this program and that program for teachers, and we heard a lot of that last night on, on, on the different news channels. What they don't tell us is actually are people attending those programs? What's the quality of the input of the teacher training, of the learner in, interventions, whatever? And so we hear lots about inputs and very little about impact and delivery. Mm. And the only time we really get to hear about this stuff is in matric. And so I think we need to be challenging governments to tell us more about not just that they are doing something, but more detail about what they're doing and how has it been quality assured? What are the skills of the people who are delivering these programs? Okay. How, how do they make those decisions in who they appoint? Mm. Because I think there's a lot of stuff going on out there that's not of good quality. And so despite the fact that we talk about many interventions in maths and accounting across the board, they are not delivering. If you look at the metric pass rates over the last eight, ten years, we're sitting in the mid-50s for those who pass at 30%. If you go to those who pass at 40%, we haven't yet got 40% of learners passing at 40%. I mean, that, if you're talking about commerce, you need way more than 40% in mathematics in matric to be able to cope with what you're going to be doing in commerce in a, in a BCom degree. Yeah. You need more like 60%. And if we're talking about pass rates at 60%, then I think we are somewhere, but I haven't seen this year's figures, but I suspect we are somewhere lower than 25% of learners who are passing at that rate, at that mark. Mm. That's the issue that needs attention. I'm going to ask you in a moment. One of them. I'm going to ask you in a moment, Prof, to give me your comparison of how um, the math situation is between the IEB and uh, that's versus the public schooling system. But where is the problem then? Where do you place the problem? Is it the teachers who are teaching this subject? maths that are the problem and perhaps the DBE basic education they've got to start placing people there who have done the actual subject as a as a speciality if you like I mean I'm saying this because I'm somewhat aware of what they seem to obsessed with in private schools and that's to get people who are either doctors in these uh, part particularly in the subject of maths uh, that's what I'm trying to get at here that is it the educators who are none the wiser about this subject well I don't think there's one in particular I don't think there's one individual problem and I don't think there's one individual solution in in some ways I think those of us who work in maths education in various ways are part of the problem but we're also part of the solution mm. and I think that while we can say teachers um, are part of the problem they're definitely part of the solution learners parents the curriculum the press um, there's a whole bunch of the infrastructure right when you don't have electricity right now, how are you supposed to teach with 21st century technology? So, so let's not 
say the problem lies all with the teachers. So mm -hmm. that's, that's my first point. The second one, though, picking up specifically on the teacher issue. I think one of our biggest concerns that we've seen as we've worked in schools in the last 10, 15 years at WITS is that at grade eight and nine level, many of the teachers who are teaching mathematics are not well trained in mathematics. It's not their first subject. So they may be an accounting teacher. Um, they may be a life sciences teacher who is also teaching mathematics. And one of the things we've talked frequently with government, provincial and, and national, is that we've got to pay attention to who is teaching mathematics in grade eight and nine. When we look at 10, 11, and 12, the situation is much better. Yeah. But the problem is that the foundations that are being laid in grade eight and grade nine are not adequate. And a lot of that is because the teachers don't have the, the knowledge and the skill. And then the professional development that they're getting is clearly not making that much difference at, at a systemic level. Yeah. So for us, that is one of the key issues. Address that. Who is teaching mathematics in grade eight and grade nine? Very quickly, Prof, I'm out of time. At least give us a sense of where things are comparing between IEB, that's the private schools, versus the public schools. Is this a, a, a general decline in the subject maths that you are seeing, or... Are private schools doing far better in these results, particularly around math? I mean, obviously they're doing better. We can see it in the results, right? But we've also got to think about what does what you know? Can we compare these these two systems equally, mm -hmm. given all the resources that are available in independent schools, especially private wealthy schools, given class sizes, given access to technology, given access to extra lessons? I'm afraid, Chloe, I don't actually think this is an important question. I don't think it's a fair question. Yeah. I think we need to hold both systems accountable to do their best. And right now, my concern is with government education, and I don't think that we are doing the best job we can for teachers or for learners or for parents. Professor Craig Ponara, thank you very much for your time and indeed insights here. And uh, he is with uh, Vitz University.